All right, let's open the meeting. 6.30. Uh, additions to the agenda. What did you have on your select board? I didn't see any on your select board memo. Nope. And do you have any, Carl? Uh, no. Okay. So there are no additions to the agenda. And let's move to review of minutes. April 4th. But the minutes of April 4th were wonderful, and I move to approve them as submitted. And what do you think, Judith? Um, I would second that. Okay, you second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Minutes are passed. Public comment is the next thing on our agenda. I see members of the public here. But they don't have anything at this time. Are you here for a specific item or here to comment on something outside the agenda? For, I was here for the tree preservation plan. Yep, that's if fine. You public comment, can I make a public comment? You sure can. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I noticed on front porch forum, I know it's on an official website, but the Middlesex town clerk posts the agenda for the Middlesex select board meeting, and the Callis uh, town clerk posts the agenda for the Callis uh, select board meetings. In addition, the Callis Board of uh, Development Review Board posts their agenda. And I'm just wondering why wouldn't the East Montpelier Select Board post its agendas? I know that's on the website, but why wouldn't they put them on front porch form just for further outreach to the public? And that's my comment. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll think about that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so, we're a little early for the next item, excuse, but... Excuse me, Bruce? Yep. What? Could you make that, this meeting is being recorded go away, or is that Orca's job to do? I'm not sure. Who's it covers up Guthrie. <laughs> oh, it's covering Guthrie. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. If Who's you see there? something like that, I won't see it, because it's not on my screen. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. I can't see who's up there anyway, so. <laughs> um, you've got Guthrie, John. Oh, John's here. John. John Jewett. He's okay. a member of select board. Okay, yeah. Right. Uh. Rosie's here. Orca. Is that Bonnie Sibley up there in the corner, perhaps? Bonnie and Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay, so um, I'm going to. I'm going to move and do this on the phone, yeah. Okay. Um, the next item is B, discussion on proposed shade tree preservation plan. Um, in our packet that we, oh, you don't have the packet, Carl, but you probably saw there's a letter here from Bruce Chappell. Yep. And there's also one, an email from Colin, is that correct? Yeah. Yep. And so we have two people <laughs> weighed in that way. And that's all I have in that area of things. So who wants to talk? That We have some members of the public here. Let's open it up to them. Um, who else is here who would like to speak on the preservation plan of the general public? And it might be worth mentioning that this is sort of a continuation of a discussion that we've had at a previous meeting. So often when we open up things for comment, and we have a little bit of a presentation about what it is, but we've already done that at, at a previous meeting. So. Well, the, what we had before was a hearing, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit different, but it's basically going to serve the same purpose in that we want to hear from the general public. Uh, but if there's questions, we're certainly here to answer them. Uh, I've got two people that have uh, been active in making this plan. Um, Paul Kate, here to answer questions, or... Um, well, well, uh, Jeff. Yeah, right. And Guthrie's here also, so he's been active. So, Michael Dwayne, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, sure, unless somebody else wants to. Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, yeah. Thanks, thank you. Uh, I, I read the plan, and then I read all the uh, statutes, and then I read the report from the Urban Forestry something or other, and then I read the introduction, and I read the appendix. And uh, just as an aside, I, I kind of used to do this for a living, looking at statutes. 
how they were amended in creating regulations to go with the new statute. And my first impression is it, it's not clear to me what has been designated as a shade tree. So I read it again before I came, and it's still not clear to me what's been designated as a shade tree. One way of looking at the plan is that every tree that's in or partially in the right-of-way of a town road in East Montpelier is a shade tree. The other way to look at it is somehow in conjunction with Appendix C and D about the places that were designated and not designated. So then I went back to it again. And, and my just kind of straight reading of it is that, and maybe this is, was the intention of the drafters, it, my impression of it is, is that every tree in every right-of-way in the town is a shade tree and therefore cannot be cut without the permission of the tree wood. That's no. what I got. Anything over four inches. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I got out of it, too. So when I looked at that, I thought, huh. So then I just kind of, and this is not extensive research, I just kind of went back and, like, it, it doesn't appear to me that shade tree was defined under the prior law. It just uses the term shade tree. So I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. So I, I did, like, you know, again, this was not exhaustive, but it was sort of like shade tree. And, and what I got was sort of like the turn of the... Um, uh, 19th uh, century into the 20th century, uh, particularly in um, the New England areas and uh, other northern climes, for example, there weren't many trees. And so trees along the road were a very important thing. because And they were sh shade trees. So when people were traveling on the roads, it, was, it provided protection and shade for people that were traveling. And so therefore, it was considered a very important thing to have shade trees. And so even though it's in the right-of-way and it might be on your land, you shouldn't just be cutting down shade trees. So that, that seemed to be the sense of it. And I'm glad the legislature did some, you know, definition. But it said, you know, shade trees are trees planted by the new law. Shade trees are trees planted by a municipality or trees designated pursuant to a plan adopted by blah, 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 blah. So when I used to do this kind of stuff, what I was looking for in the plan was, you know, in accordance with 24 BSA section 2502A, the following trees are hereby designated as shade trees. That, that's kind of what you're looking for because, you know, and I, I know what I, I used to do enforcement, so we're not going to enforcement, but if you ever wanted to, like, if someone ever questioned it mm -hmm. and said, well, show me where it says that. It's like, well, this, this is kind of, you know, you get it, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking at some point, no matter what you come up with, in my humble opinion, you have to write the plan that says, in accordance with 24 BSA section, da, 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 the following trees are hereby designated as shade trees pursuant to a plan adopted under blah, blah, blah. Then, it, then it's clear. Then you take it from there. But if it is every tree, that's along every right away. That's that seems a little excessive to me. So, as someone who owns land on two roads. So, I have a question for Michael before we move on. Okay. Yeah, I've got Rick will be next. Right. Right. Okay. So, Michael, on page two, the first line under action of the town is the town of East Montpelier adopts a shade tree preservation plan pursuant to 24 v VSA section 2502 that expands the duties of the tree warden in the municipality beyond solely trees planted by the municipality, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the top of the next page, it says the East Montpelier tree warden has jurisdiction over all shade trees consisting of... Uh, so how often do you want us to write for it to satisfy you 24 BSA section 2502 in, in this plan? Well, I, you, you, you don't have a printed out thing, do you? Yeah, we do. I do. I have a yeah, plan. Yeah, you, you have one right there. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, 
I only have a single file printer at home, so when I go to print something, it's pen paper, then they don't. Okay, so Carl, uh, take me back to where you were, please. So, bottom of page two, action of the town. First yep. slide. I read, that, I read that a couple times. Okay. This action initially continues the protection of all larger trees that are in the road. Right, right, right. It is noted that the right of way, did it. trees that are fully partial over the middle end of the jurisdiction, over time the protection zones are redefined. Da, 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 da. Okay. And then, and then the, the thing that, that okay, that's a, that's a pretty good start. Could have been a little clearer. Then the next paragraph on the top of page three. The East Montpelier Tree Warden has jurisdiction over all tr shade trees consisting of colon one trees planted by the municipality, two, trees designated by the select board, and tree warden is critical to the, that's like, wait, no, so, so, so that, that's where I went, went off the rail. So I don't understand why. So trees designated, that seems to say, after the colon, on the top of page three, subsection two, trees designated by the select board, so I'm waiting for that, where is that designation? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not, I'm not. So that, that, just, that reads to me like just about a dozen lines above, we cite the statute. Yeah. So how many times do you want us to cite the statute? You know, here? Carl, I'm just trying to make some comment. Yeah. I don't appreciate the cynicism. Um, trees designated by the select board and tree warden as critical to the cultural, historical, or aesthetic character of the municipality and constituting a public good. Well, that to me reads something then other than all trees. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I do. I yeah. see what you're saying. I'm yeah. like, oh, you're right. cultural, historical, or aesthetic character. So that must be, that's something that other than all. That's like a subset of something. Yeah. So then I go, there's four inches. So that, that, that's where the unclarity comes in. Then I go to the appendix, and it's like, then I, that's where I kind of went off the rails. So that, I think it needs to be clearer because... I see the first paragraph, I got to that second section, and that seemed to be something other than all. Yeah. So to under if, do I understand you right in that you're saying that the bullet points under section two seem more expansive than the introduction to section two? They seem narrower than the introduction to section two. The introduction to section two is specifying those trees critical to cultural, historical, or aesthetic character of the mus yeah. municipality, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So that's a, kind of a subsection of trees, yeah. one might think. And yeah. then the, the first bullet says, all trees with all trees within the right-of-way of town right. highways. Because it, cause it, over because it, right above that, Carl, with that circle bullet, all trees, it has comma, including, mm -hmm. colon. So I'm, so, so I'm seeing these sub, so I'm seeing subsets, which drink, which takes me away from all trees along every road. Okay, so you went from you went from a larger bottom of page two to a smaller top of page three, and then the bullet point. And then I get to, to the bottom of two, the three smaller bullet points, and then the three more smaller bullet points, and I'm like two white ash trees on the east side of North Street. What? Except, you know, five flight and including. So it, it's confusing. Okay, I, well, I let's, let's accept that comment sure. which, and move on to because we have other people. Mm -hmm. Plus, I want to read what Bruce Chappell said because not everyone has the same. I mean, uh, Paul hasn't heard what Bruce said, Jeff hasn't. I have. Sure. Oh, you have? Yeah. You read his email, his yeah. letter? Yeah. And you did too? But I don't think the other people here, Michael Dwayne hasn't. I and so I think it'd be. Fine behoove me to read those real quick. But anyway, I want to hear what Rick has to say because he has his hand up. All right, well, yeah, I think there's probably a lot of different perspectives depending on what road you're talking about. Obviously, Bruce Chappell's got a lot of, you know, shade trees, and they're really shade trees. Yeah. But they've been developed for many, many years. Now, on, on my road, Sodom Pond Road, um, and I've got quite a bit of frontage on here now on both sides. I'm sorry, Seth, can you identify the person Oh, Rick Barso. Oh, Rick Barso. Yeah. Yep. Um, I would say the majority of the trees are not shade trees. You know, a lot of them are just bean poles and need to be thinned out to develop some shade trees. And, you know, that's that's the kind of thing 
I like to do, because some of them are nice sugar maples for one, and others nice ash, there's a, a few oaks, um, which will make nice shade trees. But to get a permit to do that necessary work to develop those shade trees, um, I don't think there should be restrictions on that. I mean, I think I got pretty good judgment on what's going to make a good tree or not in yep. the future. So I think we have to kind of look at not what's just the present, but with an eye towards the future okay. and what's going to develop. But that's the town's argument. I, okay, so I just want to... I'm just trying to clarify everyone's position on this, and I'm not going to come out with my own thoughts at this point. But the position of these folks that wrote up the plan is they want to manage every tree that's over four inches that's in the town right away. That's that's what it is, every tree. So I appreciate what you're saying. What you're saying is if you own trees by the road that are in the town right away, you feel that you should have the right to manage those trees yourself. Is that what I get out of that? Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not I, mean, there, I mean, there may be some some questionable trees. Yeah. And I would and I would I would yeah. just come to Paul and I'd say, yeah, I think this should stay. This should come out. Or yeah, know, yeah. Have but but you don't have to but do in that general, right now. You don't have to do that right now. Yeah. When we if this plan got passed, you would have to do that with every tree that's over four inches in the town right away, even if it's on your land. Yeah. Well, that's that's that what a, I think. Whatever this, I don't know where this plan came from, but it seems it's no. It's Jeff Queto here, uh -huh. and Paul have been developing this plan in conjunction with Joanne Carton, who was, and a few other okay, people. Okay, so it's been developed by people. Who right, have but it's it has not been passed. Yeah, so no, this is why it's we have it here tonight. I, under, so, I understand that it's proposed. Right. But. Exactly, and we wanted people to comment on yeah, it, yeah. and that's is why we have it on the agenda tonight. Yeah. And we made, and we created we came to this space here so we could have as many people as possible come to this meeting and comment on this. This is the main reason that we came to this space tonight, yeah. is because there's not much space over in the town clerk's office, and it's uncomfortable when people are thinking about COVID, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Everyone's sitting close together, so that's one reason we advocated to have this. We wanted people to comment. On this. Yeah. So anyway, um, Eric, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm with, I'm with Rick on that. I I think. Uh, you know, we should have the ability to, to manage our own trees. And essentially, we're paying the taxes on that land, and if, uh, if we want to cut them down, I think that should be all right. Yep. Well, thank you. Did you come here for the yeah. shade tree? Yep. Do you, you want to say, do you, can you introduce yourself? Uh, Patrick McCoy, sorry. Patrick McCoy? So, yep, sorry. I'm it's just sorry. that um, everyone wants to know who everyone is, so. So Patrick McCoy is here, um, and we have this item on our agenda, the Shade Tree Preservation Plan. Um, Jeff Quetto and Paul Kate have been instrumental in crafting it up. Um, it has not been passed. It's a proposed plan, and we're looking for people to comment on it. So uh, here you go. Well, people are giving their two cents, which is great. And then I've got a couple people that have written in, and I wanted to read what they say. Okay. So there you go. Um, so um, I, th I think it's good intentions. I read through the whole entire, I've got the shade tree presentation plan. Um, I, I personally, you know, just um, in managing the, the things that come up for me, um, is maintaining our roads, ditches, stuff like that, and personal, you know, property. And um, so, you know, like a good example is mud season this year. <laughs> and there's a lot of factors that go into a, a mud season. But I just think the idea of trees along the side of the road is just common sense as maintaining roads, ditches, not a good idea. And... Um, you know, you got leaves to deal with um, that can plug culverts over time, everything else. But, um, you know, more, you know, um, I think I think some of the bigger issues, too, is the town's trying to take care of invasives. So one of the best things I think this town's done is have the roadside mowing. And, and I think people have learned seeing what the state did with the interstates spreading the wild parsnip all over. 
that, you know, mowing before they flower and seeding it up and down the road. So, you know, I know the town's dealing with invasives. Um, you start planting trees, and what are you going to do when you have invasives all around the trees? Um, how about ditching, um, maintaining your ditches, everything else? Um, it, it just, if I was, if I was a road foreman, it would hurt my morale to have to have just more red tape to go through and 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 do something like this. Um, so, um, you know that um, you know trees grow too. I mean, I think East Montpelier has changed a lot, and um, there's more traffic, and there's ways to try to slow down people. It seems like they've got to be in a a rush, but. Um, you know, I, I, I just think visibility issues, we have a, you know, a lot of animals um, in East Montpelier, deer, different animals. Um, so I, those are just a few of the things that raised a red flag for me. Could I ask a clarifying question? Hi. Um, when you had said that you don't, I, I, I think I might have, um, I don't think I heard correctly the beginning of your t um, talk or the beginning of your comments when you said, I don't think trees should be managed, or maybe I didn't hear that um, correctly, because the shade tree management plan doesn't necessarily prohibit all future cutting of trees or management of trees. And But I, I'm not sure if I heard the beginning of your statement correctly. That's I just wanted to make sure I heard you correctly. And just for your information, Patrick, that computer is still in the park board meeting. Yep. Um, you know, I, I just think planting trees along the sides of the roads, I assume, if I read this correctly, it's about 10 feet off the travel portion of the road. Um, I, I just don't think it's a good idea. Um, there, there's 80% of our land now is got trees, and, and um, I think we need to maintain our roads and and, and really concentrate. I mean, if anyone knows in the last 20 years to see what invasives have done in this state, and um, they're all over the place, and it's going to be a big deal managing them, side road mowing and everything else to to keep that at bay. So I think trees, uh, you know, they're inevitably going to grow right in with the trees. So, um, so anyways, if there was trees planted, on my land, which I would have a really hard time with somebody planting a tree on my land, but if I got invasives around them, um, that tree is going to be low on the totem pole compared to like wild parsnip and chervil, or or if I got Japanese root knot or something coming up. So, so just so I understand you, Patrick, you're saying that all roads should have no trees anywhere in the right of way. That we should just cut them all down. Um. I don't think we should. I don't think we should start with cutting every tree down the road. But I don't think adding trees makes sense either. That you know, we got a ditch, we got a roadside mowing. We do. I think that's a great thing the town has implemented. Um, and um, you know, it's hard enough. I mean, just even equipment. You know, I I think we've always been flexible with the budding landowners, like widening roads or whatever or if somebody has two cents to say about the edge of their property but um you know a good example this year is just i saw where the town lost a plow to a tree this year so, so where in this plan do you see anything about adding trees oh uh, well just um promoting trees in the road i should say you know just in that right-of-way area i just don't support, um, you know, in an ideal world, if we didn't have any trees and that right away that we have to maintain, I would say that would be all the better. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, well, I'm still trying to understand what, out, what you'd like to see, Patrick. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, Rick, could I, could I finish this yeah. conversation with, with Patrick? So I, I'm just trying to understand what you'd like to see. So you don't want to see trees <clears throat> in the right of way at all. Is that correct? Um, I don't, I don't want to support, promote 
the trees, you know, just taking precedence in, you know, managing them, documenting them, saving them, all that, and everything it takes. It's just more red tape. It's like just our state is up against that. I, I just feel the state has sometimes a lot of red tape and um, too many rules and regulations, and, and just after a while, it, it uh, kind of gets my gander, honestly. But yeah, I, I'm, okay, I'm understanding you. the position. So thank you, Patrick. And I just want to be clear. I appreciate or we appreciate every comment that comes in here. And we're not here to actually grill people on what they're thinking. We're here to take the comments. So, and I appreciate everyone that makes a comment. So thank you for coming in and saying that. And I understand completely where you're coming from. So anyway, does anybody else have anything else? Because I want to read the um, couple quick letters that we got in here. Well, yeah, uh, Michael Dwayne. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and just, just for the record, um, on the bottom of page four, it says the process for uh, removal of trees. Yep. I, I, I would agree with that. I think that makes sense. So page one, four. Yeah, page four, sub five, you know, removal of disease dying or dead shade trees and any shade tree that creates a public hazard. So there's trees along the side of the road. They're in the wider way. And the uh, tree ward or whoever on the committee says, boy, that tree's a, it's a, it's a hazard that would be removed. I think that makes a lot of sense. So I, so I fully support uh, 5A and B as being something that should be done. I, I just want to push back against that a little bit, though. Yeah. You can have a tree that's actually dangerous that the tree warden would like to keep there. Huh. The tree warden is not focused on safety. The town road foreman, maybe. Yeah. The tree warden is more focused on trees. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Seth. That's not correct. If you look at B, well, any shade trees that, that create a hazard to public safety impact a disease or in con or insect control program or must be moved to comply with the state or federal law. So public safety is part of what is um, informs the actions the tree warden will take in the implementation of this plan. So um, I, I, I agree with you, Seth, that the purpose of today is to hear from um, yes. our fellow neighbors from East Montpelier and we'll take that information and decide, yes. you know, whether and how to go forward with the plan, but um, I just needed to um, correct that impression. And I think, okay. it's, I think it's also incorrect to say that our tree warden himself is unconcerned with safety. I, I think that, uh, that that's something that uh, we can talk to the tree warden about and find out uh, what his concerns are. And we have the power to appoint the tree warden. So we can tell the tree warden what we want the concerns to be. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Yep. Paul, you want to say something? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, I, but it's just I saw your hand up, and yeah. I wanted to read the two uh, letters we got, yeah, but I'm go ahead. You go ahead and do that. Then I okay. Some things I'd like to say. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we heard from everybody and everyone yeah, heard that's everything. Exactly why so here. the email we got from Boost Chapel says, I'll not be able to attend the Zoom meeting. I won't read the rest of that paragraph, not relevant. He said, I'll be right up front with you and explain I do not know much about your committee and your objectives. There are plenty of rumors around it, and it does sound somewhat suspicious. <laughs> I like that, actually. Um, our family owns 1.5 <laughs> 1 to 2 miles of road frontage in town, some of which are arguably some of the most scenic roads in town. My forefathers established these scenic shade trees over two centuries ago and have stewarded these shade trees since then. For over 150 years, our family have tapped these majestic maples. In the last 40 years, my father Roger and I thinned out many trees along the north side of La Young Road. Today we have an example of a classic Vermont maple tree lined road. Every year I fertilize trees along center and Lyle Young roads, thin out dead, dying, and trees spaced too closely. That is why it looks like it does. There is no one who is more supportive of maintaining this resource in town than I. From what I have heard, if the shade tree preservation plan is implemented, I will need to now seek permission from the tree warden to manage the very trees I have been caring for decades. 
The present tree warden, Paul, Kate, and I are longtime friends. I have the utmost respect for Paul, but I don't need Paul's permission or oversight to cut out dead, dying, or trees spaced too close to one another. He certainly has more important things to attend to than such basic forestry management practices. With the thought of 63 miles of forested roadsides in town, he and the road crew will be overwhelmed with many senseless requests. I have to wonder if the select board in Guthrie truly want to move into such a regulatory role concerning shady trees in town. We have a dedicated road crew and they have plenty to do just dealing with roads, keeping brush back and moving large trees that have fallen into the roads. I personally have not seen a problem with landowners cutting, cutting numerous trees along our town roads. Since this is fast becoming an issue in town, I really wonder what the legality of the tree ownership really is. I totally realize that the town has a right of way from the center of the road for the purpose of maintaining and improving roads. Our ownership follows the edge of the road and we pay taxes on that land. From your agenda, I see many references to ash tree removal due to the impending emerald ash borer. I applaud your efforts to remove ash trees along roadsides before they become a safety issue. As the infestation grows, this will likely become a much bigger whoop, issue. I look forward to hearing more about your committee efforts. Bruce Chapel. So that was, um, thank you, Bruce, for taking the time. Um, so this is from Colin, what's this, uh, Blackwell. Um, so this is fairly long, but I will read it. Um, to the East Montpelier Select Board Roads Committee, I have some questions and comments regarding the town's proposed shade tree plan. The questions in bold come from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns Tree Law FAQ page. Does the Vermont League of Cities and Towns language encourage trees, towns, to define all trees in our town roads, public way, as shade trees? I interpret the language as shade tree designation is meant for a select tree or group of trees. Quotations, a shade tree is a shade or, ornament or ornamental tree that is located in whole or in part within the limits of a public way or public places, provided the tree was, colon, was planted by a town or is designated as a shade, shade tree pursuant to a town's shade tree preservation plan. plan. In order to be designated as a shade tree under a town's plan, the select board and tree ward must agree that the tree is critical to the cultural, historical, or aesthetic character of the town. That's the end of the quote. Designating all trees, this is Colin again, designating all trees along town roads defines them as critical to our town's cultural, historical, or aesthetic character. Is that accurate? Is this level of protection necessary for all roadside trees within the public way? I understand the state is not giving clear direction as to how towns give some protection to non-shade trees, specifically life, healthy, and non-hazardous trees, but will it be practical for the town to have such a large inventory of shade trees? Shade tree plans are optional, intended to be guidance rather than regulation. So here we have a quote. An optional plan adopted by a majority of the legislative bodies, select board, trustees, council, aldermen, of a municipality, and the tree warden. A plan must have certain elements as described in 24 VSA 24, 2502 and may have additional elements. The plan is a town-wide document that enables protection of designated shade trees and sets policies for planting, managing, and removal of shade trees. For the most part, a shade tree, this is still a quotation, for the most part, a shade tree preservation plan is just that, a plan, a guidance document that describes the town's internal policy. As such, it is a primarily a non-regulatory tool, meaning it is largely of no legal effect on its own, though it could inform a regulatory tool, e.g. ordinance, adopted for carrying out its purposes. Tree warden. The process to remove shade trees involves the tree warden, the town, and the select board. Quotation marks. Tree wardens control all shade trees in town and may cut or remove them or cause them to be cut or removed. Before a tree warden cuts or removes a shade tree, they must post public notice at least 15 days prior to the cutting or removal in at least two conspicuous locations in town and in the town clerk's office under 24 VSA 2509. When the shade tree proposed to be cut or removed is located on property held in fee by another, the town must notify each abutting landowner. Any municipal resident or landowner may appeal the proposed tree warden action within 15 days of the notice being posted by writing to the select board. If the proposed action is appealed, the select board must give notice of the appeal to the tree warden and hold a public hearing. See above for information on the hearing. 
That's the end of the quotation. So this is Colin. Has the impact on time, efficiency, and cost been considered if all trees are defined as shade trees? If so, we need to set up these policies and positions that will fit with our town, tree warden, and road group. And here's a um, quotation from Duncan Hastings in Johnson, Vermont. I've always thought of the role of the tree warden to be one of an intermediary and an advocate for trees, a person that could try to balance legitimate interests of a landowner highway crew and utilities in trimming and removal practices related to trees. I would hope we could craft a plan that was geared more to that role. That's a quotation from Duncan Hastings in Johnson, Vermont. So the next two paragraphs are from Colin and that's the end. A practical fit may be to create a preservation plan to be a set of guidelines for best practices. The plan could also outline a path for future updates on to shade trees. So trees or sections of roads could be planned under shade tree protection. This process will allow tree warden, landowners, and select board to implement if dream, deemed critical. I am grateful our town has active tree advocates that are bringing knowledge and attention for the public good, preservation, and the environment. I hope my input to this discussion can be seen as practical and not intended to discourage preservation work. Thanks, Colin Blackwell. Thank you, Colin. Okay. Move to Paul. All right. I would like to start <coughs> saying I am <coughs> pleased that we've got at least some turnout here <coughs> because this is exactly what I was hoping would happen that we could find out who's interested in this issue and instead of just looking at it as you know who's trampling on whose toes or, or how, how are we going to do this uh, <clears throat> because I think the best policy is happens when the parties who are interested become part of the solution <clears throat> and so this was put in here uh, sort of to because the the law changed uh, <clears throat> it, it is changed the idea of what the tree warden and what the select board <clears throat> where their jurisdictions are and <clears throat> uh, you know I believe I've read that that before this law changed and the select board was responsible for all that uh, right-of-way land including the trees on it <clears throat> uh, and not necessarily just the tree warden so <clears throat> but in in the process <clears throat> of changing the law they've defined a shade tree first of all in a way that our English teachers would have had our hair if they if we defined a word by using the word itself in the definition and that so <clears throat> you, you don't call a shade tree you define a shade tree by calling it a shade tree uh, or a ornamental tree you specify and that's causing some of the problem here but and <clears throat> secondly I happen to believe that that we that our best solution is going to come from putting the ideas that everybody's expressing <clears throat> into this plan to make it work for everybody and so there's nothing as far as I'm concerned in here that says that, that what we put in there is should be a, a final result it's a way of 
getting our involvement out there so that we come up with the best solution possible. I'm no different than everybody else in this room who owns land. And we have, <coughs> uh, you know, nobody likes to think that somebody's trying to usurp their, <laughs> their rights or whatever, if you will, which couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, <coughs> And if, that, if that's how people believe, and I don't really think they do, I think everybody really cares about the kind of work that Bruce Chapel has done for <clears throat> decades, and, <clears throat> and that his ancestors allowed us to get the benefit of uh, 150, 200 years later. You know, are we... You know, cutting off our uh, nose despite our face here. Uh, where are the the trees that are going to replace Bruce's trees? Those are all, like many of us, senior citizens and have been for a while. And <clears throat> if we don't work together and cooperate and figure out how to make this work for everybody uh, as best we can, then <clears throat> we're not going to have anything but roadsides, woods right down to the road everywhere uh, in the future if we don't plan ahead for it. And sometimes those trees that are the size of my thumb some of those trees are going to be the ones that everybody says, don't ever touch those trees in, <laughs> on Chapel's land, you know, they, even though they don't even realize that those were planted trees. You know, as far as they're concerned, those are nature's volunteers because they just don't have enough experience with the history and the, and the, uh, the tree anatomy and physiology and stuff to understand that that might, that those trees were planted and you can figure that out and of course it used to be all over <coughs> town and I'm sure some of our people in this room remember some other places in town where they were just cut down <coughs> for whatever reason whether it was to get federal money for road improvement or <clears throat> uh, there were a number of different reasons why they, that happened but those trees were were planted for for a reason as Michael Duane was pointing out and also the land was the opposite of what it is now it was 20% open and 80 I mean 80% open and 20% forested now where the exact opposite <clears throat> and uh, so those trees provided shade for the animals because it was all open land practically everywhere around here and uh, and so this was forward thinking work <clears throat> being done by the individual farmers and <clears throat> and they mowed by hand under all those trees, just like they did in a lot of the rest of their farm. <clears throat> and even after the farms were using mowing machines, they st the farmers would still go out and mow around those trees. And they felt the equity that they put into it. <clears throat> it was important to them. And thankfully, we've got people like like Bruce and others in this room who feel that way uh, and what they're responding to is <clears throat> legal and, and bureaucratic <laughs> gobbledygook, if you will, <clears throat> that seems to be railroading us down a route that 
we can do better at if we put our heads together and <clears throat> figure out what we want to do. We don't, I, I don't see that, that that makes a lot of sense, that we're going to get all over town everywhere. But <clears throat> having some understanding of how we got to where we are and how we're going to work it out to to have what we we and our children and our grandchildren and great grandchildren are going to be looking at uh, not the trees that we were looking at tonight that are this big around and full of holes and ready to fall apart uh, <clears throat> but are actually trees that we want to have next to the road and not necessarily right next to the road. The roads have all gotten wider, but uh, <clears throat> but actually have some sense and feeling that we are doing something both for our town's good today, but also into the future. <clears throat> and I, I wonder sometimes uh, what some of the old-time farmers would think about what's happened now. <clears throat> uh, they, they would be disappointed in the fact that the land wasn't taken care of under those trees that had been planted. We've now got trees that are, that are uh, nature's volunteers all along the roadsides. And I don't think that we necessarily can't have, you know, that, that the tree warden necessarily has to, you know, as somebody said, have a permit to do it. That's not the intent at all. And I don't think we should be <coughs> wedded to that. I think we're better than that. And <coughs> uh, so... You know, my wish is, as somebody who's spent 50 plus years <clears throat> growing trees and looking after trees and learning about trees and what they have to teach us, that <clears throat> I, I know that due to my eyesight and stuff, I'm not going to be here being able to do these things for a long time. Uh, into the future, but I would sure hope that <clears throat> the town could take advantage of of <laughs> some of the things that our citizens know, both about how we got here and ways that we may go into the future, and that <clears throat> that I can actually lend my experience that I've had, uh, which is going to be different than others, uh, into making not just the shade trees that are designated legally uh, as trees planted by the town, uh, but a lot of the other trees in town or areas of town where we want may want to have trees planted, but more more likely, we've got more than enough trees, and uh, it's a matter of trying to determine which trees we do want to have, and that's not going to happen everywhere in town any more than it did historically. <clears throat> but, but I think that if we, to me, this this plan here needs a lot of work. It doesn't talk anything about specifics. Uh, and <clears throat> I really feel that that having the input is is critical uh, to this, and that the tree warden <clears throat> doesn't shouldn't be in a in a position of 
<coughs> trying to <laughs> defend a, a, a definition that doesn't really make a lot of logical sense to, <coughs> you know, it's, it's almost as if it's trying to <coughs> limit our possible future with <coughs> in our town uh, and I don't know who's <laughs> who's who's to gain from that over time but uh, but I think there's there's a lot more to it than just the words on this paper and <coughs> and I'm not necessarily wedded to whatever is in in here if if people are want to have input and and stuff like this. More power to you. Uh, I'm I'll be happy to to do that. If that's not what you want, and you're just looking for some short-term solution or something, well, uh, you know I'm not your man. Well, let me let me see what Jeff. I, I want to hear from Jeff on this. Sure. And I also want to hear from Crosby. Mm-hmm. So See what we have left for time. By the way, I I want to give a lot of credit to Guthrie and the road crew, and the select board who has certainly been behind us on and trying to deal with the issues that we didn't didn't ask for, and we're yeah. doing our best to deal with with the Emerald Ash Bore. So right, thank right, you. right. Well, thank you, Paul. So appreciate all the work that you've done and all you've had to say about this. A little bit touchy subject. <laughs> so, Jeff, what did you? Um, I know you'd like to say something. Sure, I, I'd I like can, to hear. You. I can chime in. We all. I, like I to guess. Hear you. I mean, we did this. I mean, we've been working on this tree stuff for quite a while. Now. Yes. Yeah. And we had done the resilient roads plan yep. with urban and community uh, forestry program. Uh, what was that like? Four years ago now. Yeah, back yeah. in the and, yeah. and yeah, so it was pretty exciting. This was before Emerald Ash Borer. We were excited about what we perceived as the value of roadside trees. Yeah. You know, they tend to be aesthetically very attractive, they have water quality value, they provide habitat, and you know, then this change to statute happened, which basically removed uh, any of the restrictions on removing roadside trees. So this is what we're trying to react to. And I respect the fact that there are a lot of people in town you know, that you know, have descended from families that really valued the trees. Their descendants continue the tradition of stewarding these roadsides. And you know, some of them are sitting in the room here. Bruce Chapel sent in the email. I think it's great. You know, but there sort of has to be you know, a recognition that there are people that don't provide a lot, you know, place a lot of value on roadside trees. You know, they don't have an interest in stewarding them. Or if they have an interest in stewarding them, they aren't educated in a manner, that, you know, they didn't descend through several generations with their dads and grandparents saying, this is how to take care of your roadside trees. You know, we have a tree warden. Yeah, this is our resource, the go-to guy for the people that don't have the stewardship ethic or this you know, the background and stuff. Here he is, Paul. You now he's, you know, we're, I guess we're going to be talking a little bit about deputy tree wardens because Paul isn't going to be doing this for the rest of his life, obviously. And um, so we're kind of grappling with, well, there sort of has to be kind of a level playing field. And, you know, the statute is sort of set up that once you designate shade trees, then there is kind of a permit procedure that you have to go. You have to get the permission of the tree warden. 
It's an appealable action, has to be placed on notice. It is kind of bureaucratic, but uh, I, yeah, it's not all that different from what was in effect before the legislative changes were made. I mean, you know, not everybody you know, <laughs> right. followed the requirements, but you know, there were you know, a number of different cases where there were you know, some travesties, you know, you know, massive roadside tree cutting, upset the neighbors, you know, or maybe the town did the work and upset the landowner. Um, and kind of got all this legislative attention. So um, I don't see where it's necessarily going to be that cumbersome to work with a tree warden. You know, if you're planning to do some roadside work, call in the tree warden, show him what you plan on doing. He might have some ideas to share, whether it's you know, one of these people that's been storing his trees for a million years or somebody new. Yeah, go to the resource, you know, get permission, and do the work. Um, I don't think it's necessarily that bad. And we did take, you know, kind of the approach of, okay, everything over four inches, it's a lot of trees, sure. But it's sort of recognizing that, you know, we don't have an inventory of all, you know, the highest value road sections that, should be designated shade trees. But then again, those are, you know, the areas, a lot of them are the ones that are being stirred by Bruce Chapel or Rick or, you know, other, other people in town that, you know, look the way they do because people, you know, and people really enjoy them for the way they have been managed. Um, so I, I think what we're proposing is probably a reasonable start. Um, you know, it not you know, like cast in concrete. It can change. So if you know, if it does, you know, if there's some improvements can be made in the future, the plan, if adopted, can be changed. I mean, I don't think it's that big a deal. So I would suggest just giving it a try. Um, so um, I guess that's my, sort of my two cents. Okay. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I'll just add a little bit to that, I think. Um, I guess I'd kind of like to see this put out more as, like, guidelines. Um, you know, I agree with Bruce Chapel. You know, I haven't seen any willy-nilly cutting of trees along the roadsides. I don't think it's really a problem. Um, but I think, you know, people become more aware of, you know, obviously there's that gorgeous section of Center Road that, with those chapels that's lined on both sides with those 100 plus year old maples and people really like that. I remember a few years ago and um, because it is kind of a problem for the town because it's so narrow uh, in maintaining that but I, there was a proposal I think some years ago to take some of those trees, take them out to widen the road and I think <laughs> most of the town were really up in arms no, don't touch those trees and I think um, you know, I think that's kind of where people are at, but um, obviously there's a lot of sections of the road that don't have that, that are just, you know, the trees that just come out naturally on their own, and there are too many of them, you know. You're not going to get any good shade trees unless some thinning is done. And, um, you know, some people have a, an interest in, in doing that along their sections of the road, and I think, you know, getting some some act to, to do that, I think a lot of people have good judgment in terms of what's appropriate to remove and what's, what's the best for development in, into a good shade tree. So, I mean, a lot of it's potential. It's not even there now. Yeah. yeah. But what you're exactly. saying is you feel that you're competent to manage your forest to join the road. Right. And, and what the pushback is from... Paul and Jeff, who are part of this plan, is they think they feel, particularly Paul, is in a better position to judge um, the potential of the trees along your road. Yeah, well, I think that's where, that's where I think it should be sort of framed more in the terms of guidelines. And yeah. obviously there are people who are going to say, gee, I don't know what I should do about this. And then right. that's a prime example. Okay, 
talk to Paul or mm -hmm. someone, you know, that um, has an eye for this but, and but, understanding. But what Paul says, and Jeff too, is that the best person to judge the trees is the tree warden, and that landowners aren't necessarily the best judges of the trees on their property. Yeah, the not town necessarily. Right away. I, I, think it's I mean, good. that's true. Yeah. But there's also a pushback from some people that say, you know what, I want to do what I want with yeah. those trees. And that's that's common thread among landowners that want to preserve their rights. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying anything against that <laughs> because I know many landowners yeah. feel that their rights are being infringed upon by more and more rules and regulations. Yeah. I'm, I'm putting that out there because that is what how many people feel. Oh, yeah. Well, I, right. I totally understand that. Yep. Uh, Guthrie. Yes, sir. What would you like to say? Because yeah. we have a little time left. Yep. I'm on both sides of this. Uh, one is a taxpayer. I'll go that way first. Um, and kind of like what Rick's saying, uh, if it's along my side of the road and it's up on my land, but right at the edge of the right of way, if I want to make a shade tree out of it, then I should have the right to make a shade tree out of it. And if I think it's firewood, then I should be able to do that as well. Uh, if I can safely do that, of course. Um, and then on the highway side of things as a foreman, uh, I, it's hard to say this in a nice way, but less trees that you have gives you the opportunity to make the few good ones really good ones pick a select few and not every fourth tree it, as hard as that is to say in some ways uh, it makes road maintenance 10 times better road quality is going to stay 10 times better it, everything about it becomes much more efficient and when you have that you know if you took it's hard to say in a forested road but like a bliss road where the beginning of it does have some of the shade tree aspects, but then you get out in there further and it's just forest. It's, it's just grown to the edge in places. And it, it, if you have took a few of the trees, you could actually relief the road of, of so much shade. It would make a much quality road, much more quality road in all four seasons for that matter. Um, it gives you, gives you that little bit of daylight in the winter that gives it a chance to melt off a little bit and get the sand to stick. So um, I, it's, I, I just also struggle with the amount of work that it's going to be just to try to keep up at all. Uh, it, it's going to be added work. I don't see how it won't be. It, 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 you mean the plan? The, yeah. the plan. I don't see how yes. it's not. Yeah. And just for instance, we've been agreeing to take trees here and there that were missed in other ash cutting. I think we've probably got 30 right now that have been on been on the hit list, if you want to call it that, since probably November. Is that fair? September, October, October, November, some point last year, right about Snowfly. And we still have, we've only taken a handful of those. Um, so I think there's probably 30 out of 37 left. Um, so it's just on the right year, we have a lot of time. The right winter where you get those up for 20 days, they're 25 for three or four days and there's some sunshine and no snow coming where you can get trucks out there and the equipment out there to do it. And then there's other times where you, you go a whole year and like this past one and did not have a prime opportunity to go out there and do seven, eight, nine, ten 10 trees in a day. And that makes things really difficult and drawn out. You know, that's, we're coming up on six months. A lot of those ash should go before flight in June. So, um, and that's, I mean, that's what we're holding our contractor to and for the ash removal. So they sh really shouldn't hold me to any less than that. So that kind of makes me feel like it's, it's going to be hard to maintain the amount of the process of it as a whole. Um, it's definitely more aware now, the whole process than what it was before the statue was gone away. Um, pre the state removing theirs yeah so and and then kind of what rick was talking about a little bit too you have the aspect of how many people out there actually maintain it there's 
might only be 10% of the population that even has a chainsaw to go out and maintain any head throw. Um, so there's only so many people that are going to be out there um, right. to, to do unruly work, if you want to call it that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unregulated work. <laughs> there you go. Sure. Um, Judith has something to say. And um, Jeff, uh, Sibley, did you want to say something, Jeff? Oh, I think he's on mute. <laughs> Push the red button. <laughs> You're on mute, Jeff. Is he here or he's looking for somebody to help I think, him? I think he doesn't want to say anything. Oh, okay. No, I think he did say something, but we didn't hear him. But anyway, Judith, you wanted to say something? Um, I, I actually, um, I wanted to apologize for being on audio for the first part of this conversation. And I think I missed part of Mike Dwayne's comments regarding reconciling various parts of the plan. And before voting on this, and I didn't know if we were going to vote, I, I would recommend we not vote today. I would no. like to, um, if he could follow up either with an email to the board or even to me, just so I can, um, I apologize, I wasn't able to really hear what was being said. Um, and I wanna make sure that I hear that. Um, I, I think I've heard other people in the room, but I, want, I didn't, I didn't hear all of Mike's comments. And I think in light of Paul's comment about that the public comment has been helpful and it ha may help inform um, if there may need to be some modifications to the plan. In that spirit, um, Mike's comments regarding um, having consistency throughout the plan, I just wanted to be able to appreciate what was said. And I'm I don't think that I, I heard it correctly. So if well, he... you'll, you'll definitely get a chance to look more at the language that uh, Michael Dwayne was talking about. No, uh, I, I know gonna... the language. What I'm saying is I didn't hear Mike's comments. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm familiar with the plan. I, I wanted yeah. to hear his comments. We're not going to pass anything tonight. I don't, I don't feel comfortable about doing well, it. We're not voting tonight. Yeah, I, that's, no. that makes sense. Right. And can wait for Amy as well. Yes. Yeah. That was my thought. So. I just want to make sure everyone was heard that tuned into this meeting to talk about it. Yep. All right. Okay. So I'd yes. Like to okay. Carl wants to say something. Some historical good. perspective. We've gotten a fair amount of historical perspective from people already. And I just want to add to it with some context. We have a process, a democratic process for planning together the comprehensive future of our town. We, pass town plans every once in a while. Our last town plan was voted on, passed by the select board in 2018. Previous to that was 2013. And previous to that, they, they just keep coming. And in these town plans, the people of East Montpelier have said, we value roadside trees as a town resource. We have a good process in place for maintaining them maintaining that value with the tree warden, with the road foreman working together. We like what we have. And then, as we've heard, the legislature went and changed some of the underlying basis for that process here. So the Resilient Roads Committee has worked to maintain the vision for East Montpelier that's been articulated in our democratically passed town plan year after year. And here are just a couple points from it from 2013. It says, the select board and the road foreman should ensure that the rural character of roads is maintained in maintenance and improvement projects. If changes are proposed, notify the public and consider public comment prior to significantly changing the character of any road through winding, cutting of live trees within the public right of way, or paving. Another bullet point is the road foreman should continue to coordinate efforts with the tree warden, continue to coordinate efforts with the tree warden and the town forest committee to beautify the town's right of way at the edges of roads in a manner that balances the need for safety and access with scenic beauty. And then in 2018, just in describing what we have with a beautiful picture of the forest, the very tightly forested part of Setter Road that we've talked about a number of times here tonight. It says, in addition to East Montpelier's forests, approximately 59 miles of street and shade trees lie within the public right of way. These trees fall 
Under the responsibility of the town tree warden, mature trees lining our roadways contribute to roadside scenery. These cultural treasures, as well as trees surrounding other public spaces, such as a school, cemeteries, and town offices, need to be managed as community resources. They provide shade, reduce dust, control soil erosion, and assist in traffic calming. So if the, the process that we had in place to take this vision of the town that the people have repeatedly decided on has been taken away from us, then it's our responsibility to figure out, okay, what are we going to do to put into its place? And I want to thank Paul and Jeff and the Resilience Roads Committee and anybody else who's worked on this for putting together a draft for us to consider. And I think that's an ongoing question for us. How are we going to make sure that we can realize this vision for East Montpelier that the people want? Okay, so um, I'd like to stop the item from being discussed any further just because we're out of time. We have a lot of things to talk about. But thank you, Carl. And I want to thank everybody for coming in. And um, we will have it on the agenda again for probably more discussion and try to figure out the path forward because yeah. we don't have not figured that out. Um, yeah, it's a good discussion. Thanks it's a great discussion, in. and it's... Nothing is set in stone. We haven't passed anything. We want to get the flavor of the townspeople's thoughts on this important plan as put forth. So it will it will appear again on our agenda. So if anybody wants to participate again, I urge you to do it. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you. And I personally would like to thank everybody that did show up. And, and you, you know what? I, I hope I, we get a chance to work together. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to... Judith, I'll give you a call. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. Hey, Jeff. All right. So let's move to the next item. It's pertinent to this last discussion. It is discussion on Deputy Town Tree Warden position. And what um, what do we do? We have somebody in mind, or we have yeah. Jeff in mind to tell us what he's thinking. Okay. <laughs> so Jeff Queto is going to share some more thoughts with us. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Jeff. I'm the deputy uh, tree warden. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, we were just wondering. You know, came up at the resilient road. I was thinking we might want to just put something out there publicly yeah. to solicit interest, yeah. particularly within the town. We we're hoping that we wouldn't have to go outside the town, right. certainly, to yeah. uh, fill a position. And we think it'd be a good opportunity to just have somebody kind of uh, get uh, mentored by Paul um, yeah. and maybe step up into being yeah. uh, the tree warden at some point in time. Um, yeah, you know, there's. I think it's probably worth having the position, regardless of whether or not we decide to protect shade trees within the right of way. Um, just, <laughs> just at least to have somebody there, there to succeed, Paul. So, yes. I don't think we have a choice, do we? What? You have to appoint a, a tree warden according to the law. We have to, have but not a deputy. All towns. Not a deputy. Not a right, deputy. right, right, right. Jeff's right. suggestion to have yeah, someone sure. coming along yeah. and become a, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Deputy. Yeah, deputy, but um, sort Mentor. of in the learning position is a good idea. Especially because you would be busier if we, if we pass the plan. What's, uh, well, what's necessary, not necessary for us to do this creation <laughs> if we want to do this? We just pass a motion? the position and solicit well, I was uh, say solicit candidates <laughs> first <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what we should do put it out there yeah. so we could just do that by consensus is solicit that yeah 
candidates, potential candidates. If John and Judith are okay with that? You okay with us soliciting? Um, <laughs> <laughs> for a deputy tree warden, not soliciting in general, but <laughs> for a tr uh, deputy tree warden. That's what we're thinking. That sound good? Okay. Tree, tree warden or deputy. Deputy, 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 deputy tree warden. Yeah. Well, yeah dep we're, deputies we're, you could have. Oh, deputies. According to the law, I mean, you could have more of them if you needed to, I oh. suppose, but not Pardon. that I necessarily recommending that. But you I, could put together a posse with all those deputies. But you, <laughs> we're lucky to get one. Yeah, well, we've got all these bullets we've got to deal with. Yeah, right? yeah. Right? <laughs> we'll be out in the woods. <laughs> okay, so we are, we'll put out um, something. I'm just going to mention one other thing. I mean, we've been okay. at least had the benefit of actually having a forest during the position, which has been really good for yeah. us. Um, the Resilient Roads Committee, we not only have a forest, but we have an arborist, so we're Kind of, kind of really nicely uh, fleshed out there. Um, so I, I don't know if there need to be qualifications necessarily um, in terms of that kind of background, but uh, I guess we can see what we can get. I'm wondering if you and Paul could put together maybe a list of um, desired qualifications or experience that might help us in help folks who might be interested in the position and also help us in selecting um, those deputies who or those people who might express an interest. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> interest okay. in trees. Okay. Well, technically, that's all you'd have to have according right. to the law. Exactly. <clears throat> Uh, but from a realistic standpoint, <clears throat> having experience well, is worth its weight. Yes. <clears throat> uh, because there's all kinds of situations that you run into that uh, <clears throat> somebody who's, who's interested may not Right. You know, have enough background to right. <laughs> to really understand but that's where what they're what you're, they're getting. You're doing into. the training. Well, yeah, and and I would suggest that even in a, <clears throat> a situation where you're you've got a tree warden and, and deputies and stuff, your tree warden really ideally should have that experience. Yeah. You know, and I mean we've got people in town. Uh, you know, I don't know whether they're interested yet, but, uh, and it may be partly <laughs> related to how much work they perceive it is. Yeah. You know, and, and I, from my standpoint, I do this out of the <clears throat> goodwill of being a citizen of a town that I like. And <clears throat> I think you know, the possibility of having somebody from out of town doesn't doesn't turn me on at all. No. Because it, it should be our, you know, we're making our own <coughs> future. Right. And uh, so that, but, but having somebody with that experience really is going to help you out in the long run. Yep. So <coughs> it isn't necessarily... Uh, have to be, but it, I would highly recommend it. No, I I agree. So we should jot down a few requirements just for ha ha's. And I think being a person that lives in the town is kind of important, actually. Okay, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, I want to move to the next item. Is D discussion on ARPA funds focused on the standard allowance? Now, I think Bonnie is here, and I know Carl has been going emailing back and forth, and I've seen a bunch of discussion about this. So, Bonnie, thank you for joining us tonight. Did you have something you want to say right off the bat? Just giving you updates. Uh, you know, yes. things continue to evolve, but they're evolving, continue to evolve in a good direction for towns. Okay. So for instance, for um, generally for revenue loss, revenue replacement and the provision of government service and the standard allowance, 
Treasury's guidance says it was previously being interpreted as look to your past budget and those are the kinds of things that are government services. Now the guidance is if a government funds it somewhere in the nation, that's considered government services. So that makes all those special things <laughs> you might want to do a little safer because the, the rule actually says a government service. So it's more broadly interpreted. Okay. Um, Treasury also has made reporting a little easier, which you're about to report, but um, that's generally good. But the standard allowance, the advice is still take it. It's the easiest way. It's, yeah. um, it just gives you more flexibility in how you do it. And once you take it, you can either choose to do what I'll call the switcheroo. We're going to fund salaries and benefits and use the tax dollars it frees up to do other things. Or you can do it even easier and say, we're going to take revenue replacement and choose to spend it on anything that we want that isn't ineligible. So as a quick, a quick review, what's ineligible? You can't spend the money on pensions. You can't spend the money on rainy day funds or financial reserves. And you can't spend the money on any outstanding debt. So you can't pay down a loan with the funds. Mm -hmm. You can use the money to match any federal grants, unless for some reason that federal agency prohibits it. But generally, you know, it, you've had sidewalk grants in the past from VTRANS. You could use it to match those kinds of grants or water or wastewater grants or anything like that. So generally, it continues to be a little easier for municipalities. You have until April 30th to make that decision. Um, I spoke to you about this before. It's irrevocable, so irrevocable. So once you make the decision, you can't go backwards. Um, you need to think about your financial. If you move in that direction after you make the decision, you want to check out what your policies and your financial system looks like so you're not doing some of the things inadvertently. Um, talk to Sarah Macy at VLCT. She's got a little intake form and she can help you think about this. And then think about whether you have other federal funds and triggering a single audit. Uh, but generally, it's still a, a green flag, go towards the standard method and um, choose how you want to spend the money after that. Think long term is the advice. That's, so I, I have a question. Um, Bonnie, you described two different paths forward for us. And you yes. said the second one uh, with regard to the standard allowance would be easier. I didn't I didn't understand the distinction between the two that you were talking about. Could you okay. take that one more time, please? Yep. I'm going to start with the both are the standard allowance, but right. how it's how you take it on your municipal books. Okay. Yeah. So one is here's my ARPA funds and here's my um, the budget that just passed in March. You would take your ARPA funds and kind of knock this money to the side and saying, I'm gonna use this for salaries and benefits in the upcoming year, which frees up the tax dollars I co collected to spend on other things. That would be one method of accounting. And these other things, sorry, you can't see my hand move, but these other things can be fairly broad. It's your choice. But because these are tax dollars, you cannot spend them on broadband. So that is a downside to that one uh, because legislature very much said funds generated by a municipality's taxing or assessment powers cannot be used to fund communications union districts. The other method says, here are my ARPA funds. I'm gonna take the standard allocation method. And from that method, I'm going to use these federal funds versus these local funds that I just bumped out of. I'm gonna use these federal funds for all those things I might've otherwise funded over here. So uh, I might go to housing, I might go to my new bridge, I might match a federal grant, I might give to the food shelf, I might, whatever your project list. And you're gonna keep track of each of those and you're going to report them under the standard allocation method. 
in this scenario where there were two, you would report, we spent it all on wages and benefits. Ta-da, and that's it. So the reportings, you still have to report all the individual things if you do, if you have one source and you don't bump to your municipal dollars, but it actually gives you more, um, more flexibility in that in the bump method, you can't do broadband. And in the second method, we could do broadband. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. And it's yeah. still, it will remain completely unclear for a while. Right. Because it's a state issue. It's not a federal issue. It's specific to Vermont. So the challenges, I asked Katie this specific question. If you give broadband straight from the federal dollars, your federal requirements attach to that. So you need to make sure whoever you give money to follows all your award conditions. They're held to the same threshold you are Thank of you. federal procurement and um, conflict of interest and all those sorts of things apply to them. So take a look at those award conditions that were attached to your grant. You need to pass it to them. And most importantly, you need to make sure they follow them. So you wanna check back in, you wanna have them prove those things. Um, so that's the, that would be what I call the downside of that one. But that's uh, still, you're still recommending you take the standard allowance. Uh, either one is taking the standard allowance. Right. Yes, so that's the, that's exactly. the green line. And the decision that we have to make right now is whether to take the standard allowance or not. And it right. sounds like the standard allowance is the best bet. And if we wanna do the ARPA thing, we could do that later through the other method that you're just talking about. Right. Before you right. make right. that, this yeah. all federal funds are yes. bumping. You yeah. want to take a look at your financial policies exactly. and probably talk to Sarah at VLCT. But that would be decision number two. Right. First of all, decision number one, take the standard allowance. Yes. So what is the deadline we know is April 30th for standard allowance or not? But the yes. second decision about how we do the bookkeeping for the standard allowance, what's the deadline for that? The deadline is when you decide to spend your funds, okay. how are you going to account for it? Talk to your treasurer. How are you going to account for it in your financial system? You could spend the ARPA very... money directly yeah. on the broadband right. if you so choose. Right. It's just the reporting requirements are fairly right. onerous. Right. Or you can just displace money in your budget and pay for you know your wages, et cetera, government services. Uh -huh. right? And then, then what you got to do is spend your tax money on certain things right. that you've already, the tax money you've already taken in. Okay. You got to make sure you spend that on the approved activities. Okay. So just to underline the, <laughs> one of the main differences that I see between what you're presenting um, you're frozen. Are they just frozen for me or is it you guys too? Okay. <laughs> That's a good sign. We know we're not frozen. Or at least okay. frozen together. <laughs> they're, they're, fro they're frozen for me too. You guys okay. are. <laughs> so it's not my internet. Um, no. <laughs> Well, and I don't think Carl looks at his screen. I could be wrong. I think Bruce does. Um, but we can see the video person moving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like he's looking. At, he's looking at his monitor. So maybe he's okay. Now they're moving. They're moving now. Yeah, they are. They're back. You're muted, though. Um, okay. So we're working on it, but you can't hear me okay. say we're working on it. <laughs> okay. We can hear you. Okay, yeah. very good. So, um, so at any rate, it's, it sounds like uh, this is, as you said, Bonnie, even more advantageous to us uh, uh, than what we heard a couple weeks ago. And then, as you said, Seth, I've been in contact with our legislators and with our, our lobbyists with VLCT. Um, Legislative Council has been uh, in the mix as well. And uh, Kimberly Jessup, who's on the House Appropriations Committee, has um, told me that 
there is now language in the draft budget, which will not get passed before April 30th, but it's in the draft budget, uh, it will be the last thing the legislature passes, uh, saying uh, municipal funds for broadband, notwithstanding any other provision of law to the contrary, a municipality may accept and finance broadband projects with funds received from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, including funds received as lost revenue. And Legislative Council thought that if that was included, that uh, that could help dissipate any questions about using this money for the CUDs. If you're looking at me and I couldn't quite tell that, yes, that's <laughs> what we will all hope happens is that the legislature comes to a place that allows it to happen, but I, it's the legislature and we can never guarantee you till the ink's dry on the bill. Right. And that they, they have a lot of activities in front of them right now. And they're um, talking about a veto session as well. Right, right. So for right now, your both are standard allocation, but is it standalone and everyone you give money to has to follow all of your re federal requirements? Or is it the bumping so you're freeing up municipal tax dollars, you have more flexibility, but at the moment that would mean no broadband. Okay. And the, the other piece you can think about is doing a, I'll call it the hybrid model. These we're gonna keep as direct federal money and these we're gonna bump over here to make our lives easier. But again, it comes back to how much time and energy are you going to, do you wanna take to track? You're still gonna to have to track where all the money goes. But if you do the hybrid model, you gotta track it in two ways. You gotta be very clear what was direct federal and what was municipal dollars spent. I think you have to anyway though, don't you? I, I, I believe you would. You, you're gonna to have to track it anyway. If you you're going to track it, but you're going to clean it it yeah. quicker yeah. without adding in a uh, compounding element like sending out the CD fiber. Oh, yeah. We have people coming in that are going to be better at this than the people that exist in your office right now. Uh -huh. And if you give them time to get up to speed on this and work with Sarah over at BLCT, I think you're going to be just fine. If we take uh, the standard allowance. Just well, you you. I'm presuming you're going to take the standard yeah. allowance. I, I think it's a no-brainer. You're myself. going to confuse everything. I think we just take yeah. the standard allowance and then move and on then to the next step later. How to work with it after? Yeah, I mean we have time, yeah. so I don't want to tie everyone up further on this whole thing because I think it's pretty clear. Does everyone feel it's pretty clear that we should just move ahead with the standard allowance? Are you feeling that? Yes, and I right. recognize that this is an evolving situation. Yeah. And even though. Every time we hear something new, it seems to have evolved in our favor in terms of making things easier. I want to recognize that it is evolving. So what I would propose that we consider is voting to uh, take the standard allowance or standard allocation. I've heard both used. I want to know which one. Standard it, allowance. Standard allowance, yes. okay. And take uh, the ARPA money under the standard allowance approach and to authorize the town administrator to um, you know, send that into the treasury on uh, April 28th uh, to give us you know, a couple days buffer before April 30th. And then I would be willing to vote against it so that in case something comes up that raises all sorts of flags for us, we can have a special meeting and reconsider it before we sent that in. Does that make any sense? Uh, I don't know that we need that um, um, backup of um, changing, and but I, you know, I you feel free to do what you want to do. But I would, um, if we were to vote, I would vote for the standard allowance, um, and because it's the how we actually apply the money and how we do our accounting, which is you know sometime down the road we have some additional time to talk about how we're going to do this. Um, but if we don't act before the 30th, we're really eliminating our options. Now we're, we're in agreement. 
We're in agreement, uh, Judith. I, I, I want to see us take the standard allowance. And I want us to do it before the 30th. And I'm just nervous that things are, are evolving so quickly that I want to give us a chance to uh, change course if something comes up before the 28th. Just as a general statement, I'd be stunned if anything came out between now and then, mm -hmm. given how many people have already made the move. Uh -huh. I'm but we, we can say, we can pass the standard allowance now, and we can say, if something earth-shattering happens, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We mm -hmm. can reconvene. And yeah. I mean, right. it's, it's fine. Is there a downside <laughs> to waiting until the 28th? <laughs> but it's... Just from a practical point of view, we I, could do this with every motion. Yeah, yeah. it just seems. I, I'm sorry, Carl. It seems silly. Uh, I well, think we, this we, is clear. We, don't need, and we, we should don't move forward. It, we don't need to do it with every motion because we don't have an irrevocable deadline. Understood. With the federal government for every motion. So, John, can you hear what's going on? I can hear, and I agree with Judith and Carl. I I would vote for the standard allowance. Yeah. Well. We all agree we're going to vote for standard allowance. It's like Carl wants to add a provision into it that if something happens that's going to change the course of history, he wants the, the right to reconvene the meeting. Is that correct? Uh, no, uh, no. That's, uh, in practice, yes. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of phrasing the motion, it's just authorizing the town administrator to send it in on April 28th. Okay. Is April 28th too late? It's not too late. Okay. Okay, let's just make the motion do that. Okay, so <laughs> I, 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 you're I, you're reserving the right. I, I move. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get it. But it's not in the motion. I, I move to accept the uh, ARPA funding using the standard allowance approach, and to authorize a town administrator to file that decision with the U.S. Treasury on April twenty eighth. Do you have to? Do you have to say how much money your your how much the award will be? We already have the award. I, what I'm saying is, I just was reading in the in the uh, annotated uh, agenda. It just said to move the approach for our ARPA award in the amount of seven hundred sixty-two thousand five hundred sixty dollars and thirty-three cents. That's. I'm not sure it's formally necessary, John, but I think that it's helpful for people reading the minutes to understand the amount of money that we're talking about. So yeah. So that's all. The the, the motion is written now. Uh, in, in there, if you want to make that motion. Okay, so I will. I will make that motion. Um, mm, Written out in the select board memo. It's in the uh, yeah. extended memo yeah. on page three, right above town treasurer report. So right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. VLC recommended motion. I got it. Right. Um, and I, 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 I don't want to take that motion as is, given what we heard from Bonnie because we have a future accounting choice to make that this would constrain us to. So I would be happy uh, to take that motion up to the, the sum uh, uh, or the, uh, the total of 762, et cetera, and then uh, comma, strike the rest of that, and then add and authorize the town administrator to uh, submit this to the federal treasury on uh, April 28th. So Judith is going to say something. I know what she's going to say, but go ahead and say it. Um, I guess I have services. a friendly amendment. I guess I would authorize him to do it now. I, I, I'm not seeing the benefit of waiting. And I'm, um, I, I, that, that would be my friendly amendment. Um, and, I, and again, I, if we select the standard allowance, we're not precluding how we use it in the future. So... The motion says government services, but they define government services either or, like the ARPA funding, not the ARPA, the CV fiber. Mm -hmm. Are you taking exception to that for the government services? Because I'm wondering about that myself. Uh, I don't think we need to have that final clause in there. Uh, I think Carl's right on that. I don't think we need it. Um, okay. And, uh, and I worry that it might constrain us. In the that's future. what I was wondering, too. Yeah. So... Bonnie, can I ask you a quick question? Did you get a chance to see uh, what Moretown was seeing as far as what the checks are for the standard allowance? I didn't see through Moretown, but Katie walked through it on the 
um, yeah. we did a webinar. And yeah. basically the check is, do you, are you taking the standard allowance? Yes. Okay. And in what amount? So are you taking your full award? So you type so, in an amount. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, so we need that number in there. So thank you, John. <laughs> okay. We need the number, but the, the thing is, are we going to say, as Judith and John both want to say, and I guess I would say too, let's just get it done. They're okay. like, they don't want to wait till the 28th. They want to get it done. Okay. Is that correct, folks? If you guys are all lined up that way, I, I will push it. <laughs> I guess I am, up. too. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say is I don't even know if there's a place. It's either going to say that it's for the provision oh. of government services. It's a different. Or it's not going to say anything. I'm not sure yeah. I'm going to have the opportunity to edit right. whatever is or or is it there. might say multiple things you have this that or the other thing I, so i don't i don't what, what bonnie said is what i thing. thought was true there are uh -huh. two things you check it check it and you put in the number right yeah so let's leave off that final clause yeah. about provision of government yeah. services because that check because without that it checks it and it puts in the number yeah. okay so uh, i would move to authorize bruce to complete the necessary forms um to indicate that the town of East Montpelier will make um, or will elect the standard allowance approach for our, our ARPA award in the amount of $762,560.33. So didn't you make a motion? I'm sorry, that would be my amendment. I mean, we, Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we're kind of informal here about how we're discussing motions. And okay, so, and okay, so, okay, so you're, but, you want to accept the amendment? Uh, <laughs> if she wants to put, we can say my motion died for a lack of a second. And, and, and she makes a motion? She makes a motion, <laughs> okay. and I'll second it. How's that? That sounds good. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Not to cut anybody off, but. <laughs> um, so. Thank we, you, Bonnie. <laughs> thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, thank you. And thank you uh, we hope thank that you. Uh, you have a rest of a, a beautiful evening, the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> have some time. Um, okay, the next yeah, item. Just, just out of curiosity, if I might ask Bruce, what, Bruce, do you, do you have the tools right now to go in tomorrow and and do this or yeah yeah you do okay yeah we we were set up when the report was generated so we're that was a few weeks ago yeah so ever since then we've been able to do it okay we just needed to be in a position to do yeah. it yeah okay okay the next item is a town treasury report who is don here don isn't here don's not here so Yep. There's nothing in the budget that's out of whack. Good. Uh, at least not yet. The one thing that he might have mentioned if he was here is that the warrant has a um, payment to Avenue for the first two thirds of the project to go back further in the land records. Oh, yeah. And that payment is going to use essentially all that's left in the restoration fund at this time. Okay. That continues to grow on a regular basis, but this particular payment is going to wipe it out. Yeah. Okay. So the next, that's a two thirds of it that's going to be paid for, did you say? Yeah. Give so or we, take. So we got to come up with more money. We'll have to come up with more money. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't know there'd be this much even available to us at this point. Yep. So we're doing better than we might have. Yep. We had thought we'd use ARPA money because that was one of the allowable uses uh, before the standard allowance showed up. Oh. So I think you'll be just fine. Yeah. In the future. <laughs> when the time comes. In the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for the heads up on that. Um, do we need to belabor the town treasury report because we're running a little behind? But is there any, anybody have questions on the town treasury report? Yourself? No. Nope? Okay, I'd like to move on just because we have so many other things to do. Um, 
WEC annual meeting voting authorization. So this is the normal request, except this year there is actual decisions you have to make as opposed to just telling me to check in the box. Right. Um, you have to tell me what things to check in the box. So we have to kind of vote for the candidates. Or, or not. Or, or not, not. yeah. Decide not to vote. So, oh, that's true. So I, I, I could make a comment on that. Okay, go ahead. Um, one, I, I don't want us to spend too much time on this, uh, but I, I do have a suggestion. If it's not going to fly quickly, then I'd say let's just move on and, and not put it in. But uh, the bylaw amendment, I think that's an easy one. Uh, they want to be able to allow members to vote electronically. Uh, we, we are in 2022, and um, you know, that instead of paper ballots uh, being required, I, I think that's a good, a good idea. Um, the other question is on who to vote for. And uh, as Bruce says here, there are seven candidates for three slots. Uh, uh, there are, um, there is one person who served one term already. And then uh, there are two open positions because two people are, are stepping down from the board. Uh, normally, I like to see a board have a healthy mix of new and older candidates in there, um, people who have a little bit of history, people who have some fresh ideas. It seems like with the, the two open positions, we've got lots of room for people with fresh ideas. So unless uh, we've heard horrible things about the person who is an incumbent, uh, then uh, I think we ought to go with that person. Um, but I also want to let you know that that, that incumbent is a, a friend of mine, and so that may be biasing my, my position. Wow. Okay. I'd, I'd also be happy for saying too much to choose from with seven candidates and let's not vote for anybody. Yeah, it makes it kind of tough. We've all got to agree on, on the three. Yeah. It makes it kind of hard. Yeah. Um, so my, my proposal is just vote on one and don't vote on the other two. And, and I'm sorry, um, does it indicate who the incumbents are? I'm just looking at it. Who's well, if you, Steve if you, is. If you, go to the web, if you go to the web page and, uh, and look at the candidate statements, then Stephen Farnham is the incumbent. Right. Okay. Yep. And you also have one East Montpelier resident. Which one's East Montpelier? Uh, Anderson. Um, <laughs> oh, Olivia Campbell Olivia. Anderson? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a good point. I like the thought. I like the thought of voting for a person that's East, East Montpelier. Well, she's certainly qualified as former director of Renewable Energy Vermont. She knows wow. a little bit about uh, electric power. She's kind of a home run, if you ask me. Uh -huh. I don't know I'd, what everyone else thinks. I'd be happy to add her to the list. I'd be happy to add her to the list. Mm -hmm. And. Okay, Susan Alexander, she lives in Cabot, I believe. Mm -hmm. Pat Barnes? I used to work with her. She's a really good person. Yeah. Pat Barnes, who's that? I don't know. Don't know either. Van Dat? I don't know. Betsy Allen? Don't know. Don't know. I don't know any of those. I know Steve Farnham. I know Rachel Onuf. Um, she she works with the Historical Society, I, I believe, um, I was on a, a suffrage centennial committee with her. Um, so, but. So, you know Steve, right? I know Steve. Steve. I know his commitment to, um, to working on the board, the thought that he puts into it. Right. Me too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. He's an incumbent. I think I, re I would recommend it myself. Yeah. And I don't know. Do you folks know Steve Farnham, the incumbent? I know Steve. You know him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think? I well, don't have a problem with the two people you just mentioned. Well, it'd be Steve and Olivia so far. Right. And then I, I like Susan Alexander myself, but that's not up to me. I don't know Susan Alexander. Yeah, I don't know the other folks. I, I don't know her. So I know her a little bit. She's from Cabot, where I used to live. I, I have Good a lot people. of respect for her as I, a co-worker. I, co I don't know what her position is on anything in electricity or her knowledge of it. 
I don't either. No. I just know, you know. So I might I might take a look at the bios and later on, <laughs> as a member, choose to vote for her. Yeah. But I don't right. want to argue for the town. I, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I know. No. So why don't we vote? Why don't we vote for the two people we're sure of yeah. and, and vote for the bylaw uh, amendment and move forward? That sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, so if you're making that motion, John, I'll second it. That's a motion. Okay. <laughs> you second it? Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So we're voting for Olivia and Steve Farnham yeah. and the bylaw. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. You just don't care. Okay. Got through that. Um, Nemric annual disaster recovery contract. $20 increase. Uh oh. I, I would just make a motion that we, uh, since this is an annual thing, it's only a $20 increase. We're, and we've passed it in the past, and I don't, se I don't sense that we're going to go without this because we kind of need this in case there is a, um, a disaster. I'd make a motion that um, that we approve the annual renewal of the of the uh, the main offsite backup program for our Nemric Nem modules at for a cost of seven hundred seventy eight dollars and ninety nine cents. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. The next one, H, consideration of RB Technologies IT service agreement. And that is updated version. Actually okay. saves $1.75. If comfortable, the board should approve the agreement authorized T.A. Johnson to sign. And this is for our computers? Yep. This is for the, essentially the ongoing um, monitoring and maintenance of the computers. Yeah. Are you so happy the with server it? And, oh. Are you happy with the service? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, they, they've treated us very well. And do they help out with the website as well? No. Okay. The website's done by that Collaboration 133, okay. the fellow we met because of our grant uh -huh. a decade ago. Oh, we're, yeah. we're still working with the same person on that. I thought we shifted horses at some point in that. Story. No, we shifted from GoDaddy to his firm Okay. Uh, for hosting. Okay. But as far as um, when we need help, yeah. we go directly to him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now he's an adult, so <laughs> we can feel more comfortable. <laughs> Strike that comment. <laughs> Well, if he was more than 18 when we met him, I'd be shocked. <laughs> but he's he's turned into a very responsible business owner, and it's nice to work with him. Uh, I move to uh, approve the agreement with the RB Technology Services Agreement at uh, 586.25 per month and authorize uh, the town administrator to sign it. I'll second it. We have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right. Uh, discussion on 2023 Mack truck replacement surcharge. So the bottom line on this is we got another letter, more money added to the cost, and the same thing that happened in January, a about a 10-day window where you could cancel. Uh, the window runs out at the end of this week. But again, the same logic applies as last time. Yep. If you cancel, <laughs> I got nothing for you after that. We, we don't have any choice, but this is happening everywhere. Yeah. yeah. This is happening with me on my farm. It's like, whoa, it's just nuts. Yeah. It's crazy. Expenses just gone crazy. Yeah. I don't see we have any choice. So, no, are, I we, so uh, are we supposed to make a motion, motion on that? No, it would only be if you wanted to do something other than to accept it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Judith and John, you're both okay with that? I'm fine with it. All right. I'm not happy about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I get it. Okay. So we've thoroughly discussed that. Um, next thing discussion on East Montpelier personnel policy revisions. 
Um, so this was directly related to what Amy talked about last time, and Amy's not here. Mm -hmm. But you can see where I was going with it. Mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping she'd be here just to direct what she really wanted. But mm -hmm. there you go. Um, I'm wondering if we could table this until next meeting. Could we do that? Or Yeah, sure. sure. we sure can. Because you want to look at it more thoroughly, or I mean, I do too. <laughs> um, yeah, and also to I know that Amy had some thoughts, and yep. I just want to make sure that we incorporate that and the time. So, yeah. so just one comment, Judith is you had acted yeah. like you'd like a chance to really do a a comprehensive look at this, and that that's not what this was designed. This was really to meet Amy's specific thing. There, there's just one set of changes on page eight. Judith. Yeah. Uh, what is, what is it? It's um, increasing oh vacation head. and also saying that um, you can take vacation during the first six months of employment. Oh. If, if you have it accrued. Oh, okay. And how much would that vacation be? Uh, it would be going from 80 hours to 120. And then in the second year, it would jump up to the 144 hours that we offer for the 16th year. So that's like three weeks, right? Right. And change, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's three weeks to start with, and then it goes to 24 more hours. So it's three, yeah, okay. a little over three and a half yeah. weeks. Yeah. Huh. Now, that would... That would change for the Everybody. road no the road all, all personnel yeah yeah i know that i just wondered Except where they're at anyway they're at three weeks as far as about the only one that would benefit immediately would be guthrie oh, simply because, because he, he's the fewest years in yeah this what's he getting now he's still at the f first window oh so the 80 the hours 80 hours yeah a big jump for him right Okay, so so it's it's affecting two people that we all think probably deserve this, correct? <laughs> it, it'd affect Rosie and it would affect Guthrie immediately. Yeah. Anybody else? I mean, well, we do the, have the new hires. New hires. Well, we specifically the included in their offers right, yeah. their, the um, new, the new their annual leave. So. Yeah. Um, that's what controls their offer letter. And it is lined up precisely with this. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just looking for. So do you still think we should wait till Amy? Um, I, what, do, what do you all think? Um, I, I think that Amy would be happy with that myself. That was kind of what she was thinking about. She'd be happy with the change is what you're saying, Seth? She'd be happy with this positive change because she's yes. um, of the mindset that people need more recompense for their hard labor. Um, 15. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my take on what I, I'm positive. That's what she feels. If she feels that two weeks is enough, three weeks is better. Um, that's what, that's what I got out of it. Um. But we don't we don't have to act on it. I mean, no, there's no harm in waiting. There's no harm in waiting. I, yeah, I just okay. wanted to make sure Judith yeah. understood that. No, I, I understand now. I, um, yeah. I could go either way. Um, and we could also just for those two people increase it. <laughs> so, um, well, we have another meeting fairly shortly, so maybe everyone will be attendance then. Including I, Amy, yeah. is that true? I think he, I, I'm not sure, but I think yeah. if we take this up again, that we probably won't need to spend much time on it that time. Yeah. Right. It's a pretty short item. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So it I, doesn't I'm, hurt I'm, to. I'm happy to wait. I'm happy to wait. So we'll bring it back May sixth. Sure. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, okay. So we'll work on that later. Town management light of COVID nineteen. Where are we on that? We're reviewing it because we promised to review it at every regularly scheduled meeting. 
Um, using the CD, city's community level tool, last updated April 14th, Washington County is at medium, along with eight other Vermont counties and significantly more of northern New York, New Hampshire, and Maine than two weeks ago. 94% of the nation remains at low. The last seven days, there have been 238 cases in Washington County for a 397 out of 100,000 weekly rate. This rate is substantially higher than two weeks ago. Bruce, are you hearing anything from um, staff as to what their thoughts are on this or if they're feeling comfortable with the status quo? I think there have been no concerns with the status quo. We, we uh, uh, had a couple of people wearing masks today because of potential uh, contacts. Um, but other than that, no, no pushback on the current protocol. A couple staff members were wearing masks. Yes. So just by reference on that third bullet point, and Bruce, thank you for providing the, the detailed information on uh, the different measurements here. Um, an another measurement is uh, the uh, case positivity rate, which is questionable how to compare it to a year ago because we have all these rapid tests that people are taking not reporting the results positive or negative of. Uh, but that's at about 10% for Vermont as a whole right now, which is um, twice as high as it would need to be to trigger under the old community transmission levels, put, putting us into the high category. And the 397 per 100,000 weekly rate for Washington County is four times as high as would need to, to um, trigger the high level there. That's 100 for 100,000 weekly rate. So, uh, so that's where we are. And um, people seem to be open to do doing more and more. Um, we, I was at a contra dance on Saturday. We had 200 people dancing in the Grange. Uh, yeah, we, we required vaccinations for everybody. Everybody wore masks, which was tough with an aerobic activity like that. But, right. But we did it. So Everyone wore masks. Eh? Everyone wore masks, yeah. Huh. Huh. So... People are open. Uh, things are opening up. Uh, yeah. Our authority to impose a mask mandate expires uh, within the next few days, before the end of the month, anyway. Right. Uh, the legislature had. Uh, well, the governor didn't want to work with the legislature to extend it beyond this time. Um, I, in the annual, or in the sorry, every other week, um, legislative advocacy meeting that our two lobbyists and VLCT hold today, I asked about. Adjournment, because they talked about a possible veto session, so the adjournment in uh, the middle of May is like likely to be sort of a, a provisional adjournment. Uh, I asked to have uh, an adjournment even after the veto session, if there is one, that would allow the legislature to call themselves back into session to consider whatever needs to be considered, just in case things take a, a really bad turn later on this year and we want and the administration continues to not want municipalities to have tools to, to do something on our own if we want to get the legislature back and uh, and have them do something about it and uh, BLCT was not interested in, in pushing that themselves they said uh, contact your local legislators if you want that to happen but that, that that's just background that I'm aware of so it sounds like we don't have to do anything different at this point I'm not, I wouldn't recommend it. Right. Okay. What are you folks thinking, Judith and John? I just keep maintaining the status quo, I would guess, at this yeah. point. So it sounds like to me, too. Okay. So let's move to the next item. We're, we haven't run out of stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have access permits. Three of them. Has anyone had a chance to look at them? One is on an old trail road, which is actually on one of my roads. It's at the top. It's got no traffic up there, so that's not really a concern, but it's kind of a rough area, so Guthrie wants a couple culverts to put in. Um, so there's really no trouble with traffic on that road, just to let everybody know. Um, so that's that one. The next curb cut is on Fair Road. And 
that's a better place for it, I guess, on Fair Road rather than off Route 14. I they don't say that in here, do they? No, it's not changing. It's no. off of Fair Road now. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I've been in and out of it myself. Yeah, he doesn't actually own land on Route 14. No, that land is set. He's, it's set back. Yeah, right. That's right. I didn't the, realize that, that little before. piece that the Reed Zone takes up any of the 14 stuff. So this is across the street from the Humane Society on Route 14 South. Yeah, that's where how you can identify it. So this internal drive does that exist now? At this place? Yeah. Yes, it's, he's got a hook. Uh huh. Um, okay. And it basically he comes in right at the triangle of of Fair Road and Route 14. Okay. And he has his heavy equipment go right up that slot. Okay. And then it drops back down to his residential, the old farm okay. access down at the bottom, deeper onto Fair Road. Okay. But it's a very tight spot right there. He'd never be able to get a, I see. a real trailer okay. unit in there okay. happily. And, and now that I look at it more closely, I see the existing and then full yeah. proposed yes. second curb cut <laughs> stuff. I understand the situation. And, and then we have the last one, Coburn. What's that? We have the last one, the Waldorf School one. Yeah. yeah. So that's, is that more on Coburn Road, right? That, our part of it is on Coburn Road. Yeah, right? yeah. And they actually have a professional plan set, a professional firm involved this time around. Wow. Which is made life easier with VTrans especially, but it also uh, means that they're using the words that you want to see and the plan is set up properly. Can I can can we do a motion that would approve all three permits and authorize the uh, chair Gardner to sign on behalf of the board? Or do we have to approve these all individually? And just has Guthrie approved these or looked these over? Yeah, he yes. could, if you, it, right. it says, okay. yeah, he has. Okay. Does I would say that. Sorry. That works for you? I, I don't see a problem. But... Okay, that works. Okay, I okay, would, I'm, you know, as long as Guthrie is, has approved it, uh, I have hardly any questions. But just for the Orchard Valley one, I'm trying to see something in these documents that we have that indicates what the change would be. Can so currently the <clears throat> lower one, so the more southerly of the two cuts, is served as the ingress okay. and the upper one was designed to be out only upper being under route 14 or closer to route 14 closer to route 14 uh, but on coburn road so still on coburn road yeah. oh yeah uh, we're, we're looking at the yeah. uh, orchard valley that's a different oh orchard valley okay so the yeah. the fundamental change is to make it two-way for both of them it, because the widening anything well it's <laughs> again because they have professional plans, it sure looks like they're going to do it right, yeah. okay. which means curbs, paving, wow. whole nine yards. Really? Wow. Okay. And so, yeah, they'll do the B-71. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Any presumption questions? is, yeah, it'll be done right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so they're putting a, more of a parking lot in there. Yes. Looks like. A, a standalone parking lot. Right. And then the lower one, the southerly one, will be the start of that flow through. What they're trying to do is make it safe for the kids to walk. Oh. There's going to be sidewalks. Really? That horrible area up between the barn and the farmhouse yeah. is going to be completely managed now. It's kind of walled off under this plan. Huh. So when the kids are dropped off, they can actually safely walk to the barn yeah. where the classrooms are. Yeah. Uh, whereas before, they were always dodging cars. Yeah. Well, getting in and off of 14 is a problem anyway. Yeah. So the V-Trans part of it, they are improving the access between the barn and the farmhouse. Yeah. And that secondary access that was on the north side of the farmhouse yeah. is going away. That's off Route 14. Uh, off of Route 14? Yeah. And there yeah. will be a new parking lot there as well that will be accessed from oh, this yeah. internal drive. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, I see it. So, yeah, there's a lot of wow. flow changes. Wow, I guess so. 
the only th DRB is going to look at this in two weeks, and the only real um, structural change is a small barn. But the rest of it is all um, sidewalks and um, a, tr a road that actually goes all the way through. Yeah. The two parking lots, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And they're going to put. So that road they're putting in between the parking lots around the barn, that's that's pretty close to the road, eh? Looks like. It, it's the one that's already there. Yeah. They're just going to make everything connect to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're going to have it hook around the farmhouse. It already does in kind of a kind of, farm yeah. trail kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. It'll be more of a formal drive. Well, it's good to get rid of that drive that comes out on Route 14. Yeah. I, tell I you agree. That. <laughs> that thing's dangerous. Yeah. Ha! Huh. It's a dangerous stretch of road because they come up over that knoll yeah. so fast. I mean, we deal with it all the time coming out of Hammond Hill. It's like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Ha, huh. okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to pass all three. Looks like, or vote on all three. <laughs> That's not... So John made a motion. Before. Did anybody second it? Yeah. Second. Okay. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Now, to be clear, when we voted on the motion, it's for me to sign them because there's only yes, one person here. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so Sounds good. When we're done with the meeting, I will show you the ones yes. you want to sign. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> They're in the, in the middle. I, I will not dare <laughs> enter this with well, a pen in hand. You may open them and sign them, <laughs> but just so you don't sign the ones you're playing with now. Oh, those aren't the originals. well, I could sign the ones I'm playing with now because you just throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could. No harm. <laughs> okay, so we've done the access permits. Woohoo! Um... The appointments, Revolving Loan Fund Advisor, Becca Schrader. I move to appoint Becca Schrader as Revolving Loan Fund Advisor. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I just want to say that Becca is a wonderful resource for us on this. She's always done a great job. Amen. Yep. Um, warrants. I don't see the warrants on the website. Right here, in person. Right. Do, do you guys see them? No, I didn't see them. Oh. Okay. I, can, I can look at them here, but... Yeah, you can look at them physically. <laughs> They're not on the website? I, I just renewed my That's page, and I didn't see them either. Even Homer nods, Bruce. <laughs> oh, Avenue, that's the one you're talking about. On the, that's what you have Yes. A chunk of change, actually. Yes. Yeah, for those that can't 20, see the bucks. expense warrant, it's about $20,000. $20,000. And yeah, in change. And that's for the um, preservation of the land records. Yes. Yeah. That takes us back to uh, from book 40 to book 26. Oh, way Ooh. back. Wow. Yeah, we're getting close. We're getting close. And I don't see any significant expenses on that besides the that. The only one that's oh, wait a minute. Another fun, page. yeah, there's the page I'm not seeing. You're going to see um, some costly some things like tires and diesel. New England truck tire, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. In diesel fuel, oh, boy. You're looking at it when you're looking at it. Yeah. So the, there's a, a set of tires that are $5,400 in Guthrie Bottom because... Price is going up. The price is exploding <laughs> on him. <laughs> well, the price went up 18, 19%. Yeah. Uh, so these were last year models, and he was able to get them at the old price. Ooh. So he grabbed them. Yeah. Um, can I see that first page? Yeah. Can you unclip it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I sure can. You can take it. And... Oh, wait a minute. Nope. I was trying to make it. things easier. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Thank you. Page two. Okay. State police contract. Okay. So let's see. I can't sign this Until you, without the approval. Yeah. Right. Right. Because you're going to be signing here. for all. I know. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. What, what about you two? Are you comfortable? With our review of it, the, the total is 41546 
like pocket change, actually. Yeah. Ju Judith and John? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we need a motion authorizing me to sign it. So moved. We have a second. second. All those second. in favor? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Judith's not voting. Oh, she can't hear us. <laughs> Judith, I'm are voting. you voting? I voted. Oh, voted. Okay. okay. She voted. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to sign it. And this is uh, 418. Perfect. All right. Well, not perfect because I'm over here trying to figure out where the heck that PDF went. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. I okay. made it. <laughs> so that's it for that. Okay. So warrants are done. Other business? Ta da! Other business? Nada. No, Bruce says some stuff. No, he didn't. Town administrator report? Oh, yeah, let's go through that. It, but he didn't have any specific items no to add. No additions to the agenda. Right, right. That's what it was. So, on the town administrator report, uh, what do we have? Just a couple things coming from the fire department that came out of that uh, meeting last Thursday. They yep. will be bringing forward, and Ty has talked to me since that meeting, a proposal for the purchase of a, a fire engine. Yeah. And they really want the the towns to commit to uh, a time frame for releasing the money so that they may be able to utilize that money to essentially buy down whatever contract they end up accepting for the loan. Oh, I they're see. trying to time things right, and they just there's they understand that our funds could come essentially at any time that you're willing to let them go. Right. Whereas Callus needs time and also needs a plan. Yeah. Uh, for oh. how they're going to come up with the money. Yeah, I, there's no problem with us. No, it's just whenever you want to do it. We yeah. Just, uh, what we said to them was we want details on how you're going to spend the money. If you get it up front, then how much of an advantage is that uh, versus us holding on to it for a while and accumulating the huge rates of interest that we make to, on our money? Well, we should just find out what they need yeah. and go from there. Yeah, so uh, Ty agreed to send us yeah. a proposal. And, and he's yeah. also going to put together a, a proposal for using the bond fund for the um, LED light switches, switch out and a little patch of pavement out where the ATV is or UTV, whatever that thing is. Yeah. And we, we discussed this in the meeting on Thursday, but just for those who weren't there, uh, when we bonded to build this new fire department building, there was some excess money left over that the idea has been that we use it for small things on the building, maintenance in the, in the building and upgrades in the building. That's where this would come from. Okay. So the other thing here is that we finally received the the anticipated curb cut request for Donner Road. We talked a little bit about this when we were discussing those 911 um, yep. issues. Uh, this is going to be a decision for the select board as to how you want to play this. Because right now the, the stretch of Donner Road that this curb cut would come off of doesn't actually exist it's just sort of a hard spot in the ground <laughs> uh, the road is yeah the road is uh, you can drive through it I you think. can drive through it you have to dodge the stumps and the yeah roots. yeah i've driven through it you, yeah you're not driving through it in a prius no i don't own a prius yeah well <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you remember when rob chickering discussed how Foster Road, that connected up to Chickering Road, yeah. how he knew it was no longer a road when he was driving his Volkswagen through and couldn't make it. Okay. Same concept here. You can't yeah. make it with a normal car. Yes, you can use a yes. truck and get through. I get it. Yeah, yeah. But. So what, so what is your I, thought here? You, you guys need to see it. Uh, see it? 
you need to see the road. You need to do a site visit with Guthrie and decide how much work you want to do on this. And the emergency vehicles can't get there. Mm. And you should not be giving curb cuts to places emergency vehicles can't get to. Oh, okay. um, yeah, but it's under the obligation of usually the landowner to fix up that road. Right. So it's been historically. Correct. I can give you an example. You no, know. you don't have to. Okay, yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Right. The trick here is that those two places at the end mm -hmm. were built without access onto a real road. Yep. And it was a subdivision approved by the Planning Commission. Yep. And there was no, our rules wouldn't have allowed for that. Right. And they. I know. Let it go. They let it go. So it's now the same we're as, it's perpetuating the same as that road. a issue yeah. by adding another person back there with children. Uh, but isn't it, won't they improve that anyway? So To get in and out? They would have to to get in and out. Yeah. But you're throwing it all on the poor person that came in later. Whereas... It would put pressure on the town to make it a class 3 road, I'm thinking. Well, yeah, it could. Or... Even to upgrade it to normal class four standards. <laughs> yeah, but wait a minute here. If you're going to start designating class four roads to class three roads for emergency purposes, you're going to get into the weeds here because there's class four roads in this town, and I can give you an example that pe landowners put a lot of money in to keep those upgraded. Mm -hmm. and, and I I own one myself. Mm -hmm. It's like, and. Access permits have been granted on that. We just granted one tonight on that class four. But road. that is not a class four road. So what is it? That's a legal trail. Time out. Watch your foot in that wire. Okay. There is a substantial difference between Old Trail Road, which is a legal trail, okay, and Donner Road, which is a class four road. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's okay. a difference. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the discussion we had with Johnson Road. I yes, I remember. Road. Uh, that's class four on yeah. the stretch that we have to be so careful with. Yes. At some point, it the town needs to be responsible too. Uh huh. And we now have two families that are unreachable by emergency services except by hooking way out and around. Yeah. In Callis, in coming back. Right. This puts a third one even deeper into the weeds. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure it's a great, great fit for this town to just say, eh, upgrade it yourself. But legally, that's what it says. We're not going to tax them like they're not already available to be accessed. No, no, no. But, I mean, our policies have always said. Your policies don't cover this. Class four? Not this kind of situation. You mean the emergency aspect? If this was a subdivision, yes, they absolutely cover it, and right. that's what I'm saying. They covered it back in 2001, two, three, when that original subdivision was done. Uh huh. This is not a subdivision. This is a plot of land that's been in place for, for, mm. ever. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and there are other options from that land to get onto. A more well-traveled road. Uh, if you look at the... Well, you, can, you can't look at it. You haven't no. seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a train-challenged piece of property. Okay. As in 150-foot elevation difference uh, from where there's a place you could actually build a house uh -huh. and where you might be able to get off the road onto the Class 3 portion. Huh. Uh, whereas this is just a straight shot onto the road. Okay. Problem is the road's not there. Right. <laughs> Minor detail. Uh, okay. Yeah, this sounds interesting, as you might say. <laughs> but they're coming I might in. Say the, that. So they're coming in the other way from Wheel Road. These people? Yeah. You can't even do it from that direction. Oh. They're in the middle. Okay, so they bought a piece of land that you can't get access to. No, you said. Except um, could we I'm sorry, could we um, I'm just wondering if maybe we can table this discussion until we're actually considering the application. We have all the information in front of us because we have a couple of items to address in executive session. And I'm just wondering if we can. 
I, I was just reading the thing that says we got the curb cut request, so that's all I was reading. Right, and that's all it is. Okay. As Judith said, you're you're going to face this yeah. more formally. Yeah. The trick is it would be advantageous to do a site visit before you face it. No, I'm I'm getting that. Yeah. And but I'm also saying that I'd like to look at the rules that govern class four roads in the town. To so see if we're on the right page here. <laughs> how, how soon do we need to handle this if they got us I, the application? You today? don't technically need to scurry around. Okay. It's more that if we're going to schedule a site visit, we yeah. ought to start right, thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. What you do with it is your choice, but you really should see it. Uh -huh. Not everybody. You know, knows. you know, making these approvals for people to go onto roads that are that are class class four and legal trails. That's just going to open it wide open. So you eventually going to have to reclassify those as class three roads and, and maintain them in a proper manner for them to get fire service. Um, I don't know if that's something the town wants to do or not. I mean, I, I know that historically, you know, these roads, the town has no requirement to maintain them above class four if it chooses not to and, and can only upgrade them if it serves the purpose of the, you know, the benefit of the public. And I don't know if they have to do a petition or what, but if you get, I think you do a petition or somebody can have a petition drawn up and get enough signatures, they could ask the town to upgrade the road. But it's, it's going to be pretty difficult to approve access onto a road that doesn't that's that doesn't provide appropriate services. It, should we be allowing people to build houses in those places where we can't get to them with these gigantic fire trucks? <laughs> but no, this is these are all good questions, and yep. we just. We need to move on as we know we have to move on. So, every town has to deal with this. Yeah, but are we going to schedule a site visit? I guess that was the question. That was the question, yes. Right. <laughs> so I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to scurry along here. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But so I'm going to be hanging soon. So, <laughs> what, what day do you want to do it on? <laughs> Did you have don't a know. We had just got it today. I just <laughs> brought it to you. <laughs> Haven't really thought about a particular day. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I'll take haying se season into. Well, May second is not haying season. That's our so. next meeting. We could meet before the meeting, like we did today, which <laughs> yeah. makes a nice long meeting. But that's well, okay. You know, we like we, each other. Yeah, we like each other. We can tolerate each other, and we can make a line up with a meeting. Is what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we could do that on May second. Okay. At five o'clock, whatever, <laughs> whatever works. It is a little hall away. So, it is. Yeah. So I'd say we do make it at five. Okay. But what? Wear boots. Wear boots, but by then it'll be dried out too. Hope so. Hope so. Yeah. If it's rainy and crappy, we can always reschedule. Yep. Okay. You guys are okay with that? They're fine. <laughs> are you going to ferry us in a four by four? To sure, whatever. <laughs> we have those. I think. What's that? I'm sorry, the video. May uh, seconds. I can't hear I'm not you. Sure. If, if you're talking. No. <laughs> okay. Talking? It looks like you're moving now. Okay. <laughs> you were frozen you for a second. Us? Yep. You. Oh, I was you frozen. Were, yeah, but now you're not. It looks like you can. You're, so you're we, were talking, now. we were talking about scheduling a site visit for May 2nd. Did you hear that? Part of it. Five o'clock, May 2nd. How's that sound? Uh oh. <laughs> They're frozen now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably we are to them. It's all relative. This is so good. <laughs> What are we going to do? Internet. I don't know. I think it's an internet issue as opposed to an equipment issue. Oh, yeah? How, how are you seeing that? Uh, just because all of my equipment is... Yeah, the, they just got knocked off again. Again, the meeting's still wide open. Okay. Uh, my screen is fine. Recording in progress. Okay, sounds like they may be coming back. Yeah. Okay. Can you all hear us now? Can you all hear us now? Hello? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. 
So we were proposing a site visit to uh, this property on May 2nd, ahead of our next meeting at 5 o'clock. Does that work for you all? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. And if you can get, obviously, directions, that'd be helpful. All that yeah. Time. We'll set up a taxi service so you get directions. Um, okay, we're all done except for personnel matters. I move to go into executive session under 1 BSA 313A3, the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee. Okay. So we need everyone to leave. Oh, we need a second and a vote. Oh, second. Oh. All those in favor of going into executive session, please say aye. 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 Okay. So we're in executive session. 9.48, we're out of executive session. Can you just make sure they can hear you? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. okay. So we're now out of executive session at 9.49. <laughs> or 40, whatever. <laughs> um, so we'd like to say a few things. Um, Number one, our town clerk is going to get a raise. We, no, we, we need to make some motions. I move. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to make a rose. Yeah, motion. I, right. I, you're I not move. a good catch on that. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I move that. to uh, award uh, a raise uh, uh, to $62,000 for the town clerk and extend vacation benefits to 120 hours per year. We need a second on that. We have a second from John. Second. <laughs> Who are you going to claim second? John. John? <laughs> John. John said slightly before Judith. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 So effective immediately? Effective yes. immediately. Yes. Okay. Yep. Number two. Well, I'm going to tee it up for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I move to confirm. Um, Bruce, help me out with the words. Confirm the appoint um, the job this. offer to Gina Jenkins that was contingent on select board approval. Is that close enough to what we need? Okay. Good enough. Okay. We have a second on that. Second. We have a second by Judith. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Perfect. Number it three. Should hang Oops. on. One clarifier okay with putting it out tomorrow to the public because okay. we've been yes. being absolutely. asked about this. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're also good with her. I think we had the date and the acceptance of when she was going to start. The 22nd. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. I just want to make sure that's yeah. out Thank there. Thank you. Yep. And number three, to dom <laughs> <laughs> I, I move to advertise the position of zoning administrator as a full or part-time position with the deadline for replying of Monday, May 9th. Okay. 5 p.m. We need a second on that. Second. Seconded by Judith. She had her hand up quicker than John. So Monday, May 9th obviously is a gap. Right. We, Potentially. Okay. Our, our idea is that the um, planning commission would have a little bit of time uh, to find a candidate, uh, select a candidate, uh, interview them as a, in a special meeting if they want to, or at their regularly scheduled okay. second meeting of the month. And our, our perception is they would do the interviews, and then we would also – they would make a recommendation to the select board. Okay. And so then, then it would go back to them for final approval. Zach is ready f for that. Yeah. Uh, yep. He was assuming that was coming, so right. yeah, they're ready. Wait, wait a minute, you said something new there. I, d I don't think we said it. It's the select board that makes the final approval. It does. Well, it does, but it's conditioned on the planning commission accepting that. Is it? I no. So. no. No. Oh, the we make planning the final. commission nominates. Okay. Uh, All right. But if there's a even before. Remember, ours is from the charter, but even before that, if there was a conflict, the select board. Oh, they had the final say so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was the other way around. Okay. 
Okay. So um, we have all those in favor, please say aye. 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 What was the second? Oh, the second. The second was yours. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. No. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, no, that was it, I think. Yep. It. That's that's what we talked about. Yep. yep. That's, that's what we <laughs> talked about for holding votes on. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, can we adjourn? <laughs> what <laughs> has that been on your mind for a while? I've been having fun, a lot of fun, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's time for the fun to end. <laughs> yeah, you made the motion, you made the second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Good night, you guys. I can't At, see the uh, 9:53. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for Good tuning night. in, John and Judith. Oh. We appreciate it. <laughs>